Dave and friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Happy Monday, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic, and I'm feeling a lot of trust for my electronics today. How about yourself? <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, they're not at all out to get me. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe there are others that feel differently, Phil, so maybe, let's get into that. There are other perspectives on that, that's for sure. Well, we're talking, of course, tonight about the new film, Do You Trust This Computer? It's a documentary by Chris Payne, who was the director of Who Killed the Electric Car? Kind of a big, big deal documentary a couple of years ago. And in this one, Payne is taking on the subject of the impending emergence of greater-than-human artificial intelligence. Not exactly a brand-new topic for us. Stephen, something we've no. probably done this more is, shows this on. This is evergreen topic. on this show, though. I mean, yes. they, it's, it's not, we, we never have the last word on it. We, it always com, comes back around. And but, I would uh, say this, this, so, this movie is not the last word either, but it is impressive. No. It's a, it's a well-put-together film, and it interviews, features interviews with a lot of familiar faces and big names, uh, folks who've been on this show. Ray Kurzweil is in there. People we talk about all the time, like Elon Musk and Max Tegmark, and just several others, uh, big names in artificial intelligence and related fields, folks who have important insights on what's happening with artificial intelligence, and it is quite compelling. It's well put together, visually very interesting, cool music. You know, it's, it, it's a good package. It, it's, let, me just, let me just say it's a good watch. Okay, you sit down and the movie just flies by and I enjoyed it a lot because obviously this is a subject that is of great interest to me anyhow. I would say that it comes to a fairly cautionary set of conclusions or, or even, uh, I would use the word alarmist. Uh, actually, in terms of what it puts together and and how well, it there, how there, it presents, you it. know, there are a lot of luminaries, Phil, that are alarmed, right? I mean, Elon Musk. Now, before he passed, Stephen Hawking. Yep, uh, the film I is mean, dedicated to Stephen Hawking, by the way. Okay, okay, uh, I have not seen it. You have, and so without too many spoilers, uh, Phil, uh, why don't you kind of give us a, a rundown? Well, uh, spoilers for a documentary, you know. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, if you want this yeah. series spoiled. Just listen to our show, and that'll spoil it, because we always talk about these things anyway. <laughs> we kind of talk but, about this stuff all the time. Yeah, you know, we're always talking about this. But basically, they go through several different topics. They talk about AI and weapons. Uh, they talk about technology and privacy issues. Then they get into a more theoretical area where they talk about the emergence of superintelligence. And, of course, that's all kind of tied in with what happens when a greater-than-human intelligence emerges and we've already given our privacy over to the machines, right? What happens when a greater than human intelligence emerges and we've already let them run the power grid. We've already let them control <laughs> weapons, right? All, all, these, all these kinds of questions. So it ends on this kind of, they'll take over, right? And this quote that you've probably seen around social media, one of the things that they're using to promote the film, Elon Musk saying that with artificial intelligence, we run the risk of, what's he called? An immortal dictator, right? From which we'll never be freed, yeah. right? That's the... That's the phrase he uses. One of my favorite things from the trailer, having watched the trailer, sort of a man on the street interview of these looks like two ladies there, and mm -hmm. uh, one of them, one of them is saying, uh, you know, they'll never be able to really truly think or be creative or feel unless they're programmed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 wonderful. If they'd gotten actors to do it, I don't think they could have done as well as those. Those two ladies. One says, no, a computer will never be conscious. And the other goes, no, never conscious. And there's a beat. And then it's like, unless they program one to be. And it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> that's yeah. that's kind of well, what we're talking about here, ladies. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. That's the big if that is behind the whole, the whole movie, the whole documentary. Yeah, it kind of, kind of so, crystallizes the, the whole thing right there. Uh, let me tell you an analogy that one of the people that's interviewed raises, and I thought this was really good. And it really makes you stop and think, okay? And, and I can't remember which one it was. I believe it was the guy from either Berkeley or Stanford, uh, AI, AI researcher. But he's talking about 1903, Kitty Hawk. And you have this not even, what, two-minute flight, right? This 100-second yep. flight on this beach that just barely works. And yep. 
it's the beginning of something. And he says, that's where we are right now with artificial intelligence. Okay, so everything we've right. seen up to this part, AlphaGo and winning at Jeopardy and just all these little landmarks and these major things we've seen, think of it as Kitty Hawk, okay? And he says, so what happens after Kitty Hawk? He says, okay, well, 65 summers later, right? It's the summer of 1968, and the first 747 takes off from JFK in New York. And he's describing what the world is like at that point, right? Here's this yeah. jumbo jet, this super jumbo jet, and there's hundreds of people on it. And people on it are concerned about whether they're going to get their salt-free vegetarian meal and, th- you know, that, that sort of thing. There's a whole travel infrastructure that has grown up in its wake, right? So he says, compare yeah. those two, right? Yeah. We probably won't have to wait 65 years for artificial intelligence to be that that deeply saturated that's kind of the there there could have been an infant at uh, kitty hawk that was not yet retired in that summer you know still working and uh and 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 flying on that 747 to make uh some sort of interview right exactly Uh, and of course i'm like well why just why just stop 64 years later we landed on the moon right i mean that yeah the the following (laughs) year exactly and and i see why he was keeping it strictly with with aviation, and of course, rockets are a different deal. So it was a more pure analogy, but well, that's how far you can go in that period of time. And when you, and, and there, when there is a wonderful thing that happened with uh, with with Benjamin Franklin, he was present in Paris when they had the first publicized human flight in a balloon. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, he was present and saw it, and was you know, uh, you know, he 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 was impressed. And there was somebody mumbling there beside him, well, saying something like, uh, "Interesting stunt, but what good is it?" Mm-hmm. His response, his response, it was, "Well, what good is a newborn baby?" Right, right. Yeah. And, and so, so, you know, maybe that's where we're at with AI. But is this Rosemary's baby? Right. That's the question. <laughs> of this, uh, yeah. Well, if you watch the documentary, I think you'll get the impression that it is very much Rosemary's Baby. There is a there, there is a yeah. real sense of urgency, which I, I think is understandable, because if you're talking about over a very short period of time, it's not that the 747 emerges. It's that Elon Musk's immortal dictator emerges. Right. This the super right. intelligence that has the ability to basically run roughshod over us. Uh, the, the analogy is made in there, well, not the analogy, but just, you know, yeah, yeah, the analogy, I guess, that when humans build a road, it's not that we hate ants, but if there's an anthill in the way, we just run over it, right? It's, it's just, it's, it's in yeah. our way. If we've you got goals. You don't even have to hate, have to hate ants, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, who knows? Yeah, so, day I will. Yeah. so an intelligence just indifferent to us that has its own goals or more dangerously, more scary trying to pursue goals that are perceived to be in our in our favor could could just run right over us right i mean it's right. uh, it, it it can it can get out of control and it can be it, it can all be over before we even have time to say oh wait we're going in a slightly wrong direction that that's how quickly the whole thing can unfold so obviously it's a it's a documentary so so you want to pack a punch and the emotional direction they're taking it in is towards wow, isn't that amazing? And there are some amazing things detailed in there, many of which we've discussed on the show. I'm pleased to say that right. we've, been, we've been tracking AI pretty well. And a few things I hadn't heard before. One in particular, if you get a chance to watch this, and I recommend everyone watch it, when they're talking about this robot that was programmed to walk that started to recognize human faces, and it was never programmed to do that. That's like you hear that and you go, what? How? And uh, <laughs> some some of those kinds of where intelligence sneaks up on you in ways you're not expecting and not for creepy reasons. It's not trying to do anything sneaky. It just, that's what worked, right? That's what gave it the result it was looking for. And you think, wow, there are just so many potential unintended consequences. There are so many potential ways this could go in directions that we're not expecting and that we don't want it to go. And and the discussion of weapons, I think is, is very interesting, but it all comes down to what's the alternative, how are we ever going to shut it down? I think, I think that becomes very clear when they talk about weapons. And, they, you know, there's this statement that went out and everybody signed it and said, U.S. government should not do this. Don't build fully autonomous weapons. And everyone, if you ask anyone, I think everyone agrees that's a terrible idea, fully autonomous weapons. But the question is, yes. well, what, what if the Chinese are developing fully autonomous weapons, right? What if the right. Russians are developing fully autonomous weapons? <laughs> what, if, what if rival powers have them and we don't have them? And I know that's kind of how Cold Wars happen. I mean, that, that, that's how these things escalate anyway. 
but you can't get completely comfortable saying they should be completely banned knowing that your ban isn't necessarily going to be effective on everybody. It's right. the part that makes it hard to come up with a clear-cut answer to it. I am reminded of a classic Star Trek episode, Phil. The, uh, you remember the Doomsday Machine? Oh, yeah. And the civilizations that spawned it that were at war with one, one another were long dead. And here this thing is out there cruising the galaxy trying to swallow up starships still, right? That's the ultimate downer of something like right. that, is that we create something that never stops, particularly if it's a autonom- fully autonomous killing machine. What if it gets away from us? And, if it uh, does, we're done. It's as simple as that. Well, I would contrast... <laughs> add self-replicating to it, and you've got a real problem, right? Yeah, well, um, if the galaxy has a problem at that point, yeah. It's like the universe, I guess, has a problem at that point. So um, we've we got to be careful for everybody else, not just for ourselves. And by everybody else, I mean anyone else alive in the universe, right, or who might be alive later down the road, because ultimately that's what you're talking about, right? You're talking about something that could domino in a truly horrific way. Absolutely. Right. But I want to contrast that for a moment. Okay, so okay. there's a piece on Edge.com by Kai-Fu Lee called We Are Here to Create. And this man could have been one of the people interviewed for the movie. All right, He has got about as good a set of credentials in artificial intelligence as you could possibly hope for. He was vice president of web products division at Silicon Graphics. He was the corporate vice president at Microsoft, uh, founder of Microsoft Research Asia in Beijing. He taught artificial intelligence at Columbia and Carnegie Mellon and did a lot of the preliminary work that has led to a lot of the breakthroughs we're seeing today. And what does he say? Let me just read a quote. All the dystopian talk is just nonsense. It's too much imagination. We're seeing AI going into new applications in what appears to be an exponential growth, but it's an exponential growth of applications of the mature technologies that exist. That growth will be over once we develop all of them. Then we have to wait for more breakthroughs for further advancement of AI. But you cannot predict further advancements. And he goes into quite a bit of detail to explain why these are still kind of silos of intelligence, right? That they're not, yeah. it's, it's still not general intelligence and that there's no reason to expect true general intelligence anytime. So you got this guy saying there's no reason to expect it. Then you got people like Ray Kurzweil and Max Tegmark and uh, Elon Musk saying, yeah, it's coming. It's going to be here any minute now. So obviously the truth is going to lie somewhere in between. I hope he's right, obviously. You know, it's like if we got a little bit of breathing room and we can enjoy the benefits of artificial intelligence without having to worry about that risk, that's probably a, that's, that's probably a good thing. Can I well, give an, uh, uh, an alternative picture, though, Phil? I've, on a couple of occasions, uh, talked about something I call the poor man's singularity, where mm-hmm. we, we don't ever get an artificial general intelligence, but these silos of intelligence are just fulfill practically every task. Couldn't you have a serious problem with these little mini dictators that, uh, if, especially if they, they bond together in some way, instead of we getting some uh, one great immortal dictator, we get a bunch of little uh, tin pot dictators for that, their particular uh, area of expertise. Couldn't you have a problem that way too? Or is it, or is it less a concern if it's just one of these things maybe goes bad? But and nevertheless, we're, we're in control enough that uh, we're able to correct that uh, because it's not just one big thing. I'm thinking that in order to take over or to wipe us out, the intelligence has to be, it has to be controlling several switches at once, right? So right. If, if everything is siloed, it at least is greater protection against that happening. But what you just described sounds perfectly plausible to me, right? You've got a cross-functional process, right? You've got an AI that's doing several things at once. And boom, right? First, first thing you know, it, <laughs> it's made a decision to do something and we're done, right? So, so I, think, yeah. I, I think that that's actually very much in line with what you hear in the film, that, that that's yeah. probably where those arguments are going, that even if it isn't a human intelligence or greater than human intelligence, it's in all respects, it's faster than us and better than us in enough respects that it's quite scary. And I just yeah, want to say... In those areas... In those areas we've chosen to do a, to do AI, the AI that we have, that it vastly outperforms us in every exactly. individual task that it's put to. And so I have to agree with you uh, in, in answering my own question. Uh, I would say that the poor man's singularity is less dangerous. It's less and, dangerous uh, than, than the full singularity. I think so, yeah. yeah. But yeah. what do we do? What, what do we do to avoid that? What do we do to avoid the, the full singularity? And... Okay. We've always said, Stephen, you've always been a big proponent of, we've got to push on. 
And that's right. kind of Elon Musk's argument. We got to do AI research because we got to be on top of it so we can prevent that from right. happening. So we can join yeah, if, with the AI. If we were, if, if, let's, let's say that the entire of the United States just decided, you know what, it's too spooky. We're relinquishing this. We're, we're not involved. Does that stop uh, the Chinese or the Russians or other, or other parts of the world uh, from pursuing it? Absolutely not. We need to be part of the solution, so we need to be involved, I guess. Uh, so yes, recognizing pushing that. Pushing that accelerator even faster is the only, only solution to say. Recognizing that our solution, our involvement, and even our solution to the problem, and even our best efforts to prevent it might be the thing that cause it. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't rule it out. But ultimately, you've, you've got you know, an astoundingly dangerous thing to do, which is to push on, and an astoundingly dangerous thing to do, which is to do nothing. And ultimately, it might just be slightly less astoundingly dangerous to try it. I mean, right. because at least that way you're trying to do something rather than leaving it in the hands of, of someone else. So, you know, you find your enemy on the road to avoid him or something. I don't there know. you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, so, yeah, we, exactly. I, I'm with you. The, it seems like the slightly less thing, to, the dangerous thing to do is to just... Yeah, and, and I mean, that's a scary proposition because... It's a scary yeah. proposition because in this instance, dangerous means potentially species ending. And as you just pointed out, yeah. maybe universe ending. Okay, so we're ending on kind of a scary note here. But I want to point out that that's the worst case and that, believe it or not, the movie actually makes some really touching points about all the good things and all the wonderful opportunities related to artificial intelligence as well. So I think with, with as a word that keeps popping up, a certain amount of humility – and a certain amount of optimism, I think we've got to push on. And I just want to recommend this movie to everybody. Check it out. Do you trust this computer? I think this is a conversation we're going to be having a lot in the weeks and months to come. So stay tuned. All right. All right. Well, great talking with you about that, Stephen. Great having you all with us. We're going to be back on Wednesday with a brand new show. Look forward to talking with you all then. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.